just coming back to the population now. Okay, so now we have a lender that will present us about Thanos and Terraform. Right, right. Well, let's clear, like, she has it. Um, so I'm just gonna... It's a bit of an unconventional talk uh, in the sense that it's not a lot of slides and more uh, running through the code and just explaining my thought process and how I arrived at the, the, the code I did. Um, so when I got uh, started the, the project of uh, installing a, a Thanos cluster, um, the, the, the state of the art, or, or like the, the, the setup um, the company had back then, was just uh, uh, multiple, um, so one Prometheus HA per, per Kubernetes cluster, across four, four or five clusters, and just have a, a central federated cluster um, where some of the uh, metrics were pushed to, um, and just alerting on the central cluster. Um, so we decided to replace that um, with the Thanos cluster, so still one Prometheus pair per cluster, but added uh, Thanos si sidecars and have uh, uh, all the shared Thanos components on the uh, central cluster. Um, but so with one endpoint, so every every metric can be reached through the same um, same endpoint. Um, okay, so what are the Thanos components we, we need to deploy? Uh, so obviously the, the Prometheus uh, with their sidecars uh, and a compactor, um, which uh, just um, compacts the 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 um, the, the blocks. Uh, by Thanos, uh, made by Thanos on the, uh, the cloud storage, um, so it just um, runs uh, runs continually and um, makes sure that the, the, the storage is op optimized. Uh, then there's a, a ruler um, which basically just evaluates uh, both um, normal rules and uh, and alerts uh, on the blocks that are stored within uh, Thanos. And then there's a storage gateway, so basically the sidecars push all the, the, uh, the, the Prometheus blocks to cloud storage and then the storage gateway is the, the, the component that fetches those blocks again and exposes the metrics. Um, and then there's a, a query here, which is just like um, basically a relay thing that connects all the, all, the, all the parts and a query front end which connects to the query here and exposes the the normal Prometheus HTTP API. Uh, and then there's uh, some other components we used, uh, which are not really critical, but they're nice to have. So bucket web is just like a, a, a visual GUI web interface that um, visualizes how the, the um, which blocks you have stored and where they are stored and, and, and where they come from and stuff like that. Uh, so not, not mission critical, but it's, it's nice to have because it makes it easier to the to debug and then there's also a label proxy we deployed um, which is just uh, uh, a small component um, that adds a certain label to every query you submit to it so that's uh, instead of uh, adding labels manually in, an, in every query and every metric uh, it does that for you basically um, so the main challenges in deploying that um, so every Component has to be interconnected through gRPC, um, which is all fine in a Helm chart if it's just a single cluster. But if you have multiple clusters and multiple regions or multiple cl cloud providers, even it's uh, a little a little more tricky to to keep all those connections uh, in sync. Uh, and then also because the, we want to encrypt the gRPC sessions, um, how do we manage the secrets? Uh, how do we get the, the uh, uh, the certs um, in, in the right place and stuff like that. And also an additional um, challenge was uh, handling the, 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 the all the dashboards we already have because when you uh, deploy a Thanos cluster um, there's an external label that gets added to all the metrics because yeah, when you have multiple Prometheus you just have multiple endpoints you, you uh, reach out to but then when you're using Thanos there's a single one so to distinguish where the metrics came from, from which cluster, there's an additional label. 
um, but we really didn't want to have to um, update every dashboard with like every every metric and every dashboard with like an additional label. That's a lot of manual labor, and uh, we we wanted a way to to handle that um, gradually, so we could keep using the same dashboards without manually updating all of them. Um, so yeah, there's a another challenge. Challenge. Um, so the setup we went for was one Prometheus pair per cluster uh, with a rotation of six hours. Everything longer than six hours um, is fe fetched from uh, two tunnels from the, the cloud storage. And then we added, um, instead of the handling the alerting uh, centrally, we added an alert manager per uh, Prometheus pair that does the, the, the short term alerts, uh, so for you know, less than six hours. And all the alerts that are uh, that need older data or need data from multiple clusters, those are handled through the central ruler, and we added another alert manager for that. And we just um, kept all the the configuration in sync, so it just points to the same Slack endpoints and stuff like that. But yeah, um, it gets handled by by local alert managers. Uh, and so that's um, the extent of my slides, because. Uh, I try to fit some of the codes on on slides, but it's yeah, pretty pretty big Terraform resources, and it just yeah, didn't really work. So I'm just gonna run through the code and uh, explain my thought process. Uh, so if there's any questions or or things that are unclear, feel free to uh, to stop me. Sorry to interrupt me. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's, I I try, I try to fit stuff like this on on slides, but it's uh, yeah. Can't you change to the white Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, um, how can we do this again? <laughs> uh, So yeah, uh, the, the low hang hanging fruit was deploying the actual Prometheuses, um, so we, we just used the Prometheus operator for that, so it's just uh, a single CRD and basically give it all the, the parameters it needs. Um, other than that, we pretty much did everything in, um, in Terraform, because uh, I tried to use the Helm chart and again it works fine for a single cluster, but once you click uh, add, add enough complexity, then it, it just uh, starts getting really complicated. Um, so the the first thing we, we needed to handle was the actual interconnections between multiple clusters. Um, so the the way we did that is um, we added a querier uh, for each cluster. So it's uh, this file. Um, we just uh, connects locally to to the both of the Prometheuses, or could be more, but in our case it was two Prometheus, or the the, the sidecars at least, um, and then uh, from the central um, location we connected to each of the queries um, on every cluster. So we just exposed the query uh, through a through a load balancer, um, and then. Yeah, just did the, the, the GFPC connection in that way. Um, so as you can see, um, we just used um, the the um, cert manager to um, to generate uh, a, a, um, a CA file, a CA cert, um, which we then stored inside of one password. Um, that's just the, the thing we were using. Uh, if you actually uh, trust your state encryption. Um, and you set that up properly, then you don't really need the one password thing. You can just use the remote state from Terraform. Um, but yeah, it was a requirement uh, in my case to to do it through one password. Yeah. It also has an operator and stuff like that. So, but that's uh, like an, an implementation detail. Um, so basically, just um, generate a, a, a self-signed <coughs> uh, CA. Um, use the add that to the cert manager, and then um, distribute the, the CA to uh, every cluster and locally generate all the the, the um, 
the, uh, the actual uh, certificates. Um, so that's basically what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, it's all pretty standard stuff and uh, and Terraform is just uh, a HashiCorp provided provider to actually handle all that stuff. Um, uh, so yeah, that's the the issuer. Um, if I go to the Actual template, uh, yeah, it's just normal server manager stuff. Uh, it's pretty easy, um, and just make sure all the the um, all the possible DNS names are in there, and then should be fine. Um, same with the issuer, it's pretty pretty basic stuff. Uh, yeah, and then because of technical depth and stuff and not having every cluster on the same version there's some some legacy flag in there if they are, if the cluster was using an old an old certificate uh, cert manager because yeah that's not something I was in control of so yeah. um, and then so we deploy the query on e on every cluster um, which just goes to all the sidecars uh, so it takes in the connection from the from the uh, central cluster and just fans out to all the all the sidecars, which is also pretty um, straightforward-ish. Um, yeah, basically it's just all all, all um, uh, should I say yeah. So um, there's a, a local uh, variable with query endpoints. Uh, which gets uh, added to the to the the, the flags, uh, and um, we should have the definition of that somewhere here. Um, so this is one of the the the, the, the fancier tricks. Well, it's not really that fancy, but um, so. Uh, there's basically a flag on the on the Terraform module uh, that just um, indicates if it's the deployed on the central cluster or on the um, uh, one of the local um, or one of the the, the, the leaves, um, and then it generates uh, the 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 list of things it should connect to. So, um, in case of the the central cluster, that's uh, all the local. Uh, Prometheus component, uh, tunnels components, so the, the, the storage gateway and the, the local querier, and um, I think the ruler. Um, yep, the ruler. Uh, and in in the case of the uh, in, in, in the case of it not being uh, also in the the um, central cluster, it um, it just has a list of all the. Um, all the end, the public endpoints for the queries on the, uh, the the other clusters. So it just combines all of that in uh, in, in one uh, blob uh, and, and Terraform, and then uh, just formats that in a nice way that it can can get passed to the to the deployment. Um, all right, uh, and then next. Um, there's the, the query frontend in front of the querier on the central cluster, and that one um, basically just points to the one querier on the local uh, on the central cluster, uh, which then fans out to every component on on the central cluster and all the um, local Prometheus, and that just provides the the, the the main endpoints you query. Um, in front of that, we put another uh, another proxy. So that's the, the label proxy thing. Um, and basically, what that that does is just add the um, so yeah, it just points at the at the, the query front end, and that adds the the cluster label for you. So um, there's basically uh, what that provides is like an, an endpoint with a query parameter, and it will add the cluster label you provide to every um, to every query. 
uh, and then you just put an nginx in front of that, which um, just has a re rewrite rule that uh, rewrites the, the the depending on the the actual path you give it, it just rewrites it to create parameter. And what that what that allows us to do is um, define uh, a, a data data store. Um, data source in Grafana for every legacy cluster. So um, it basically acts as if you're talking to the local Prometheus on the the like the, the way it was set up um, before. Um, but it actually talks to the Thanos query. Uh, so it goes to Thanos, but it just, you, you, do, you, you lose the functionality of aggregating across multiple clusters and stuff like that. But the, 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 the nice thing is that you just transparently uh, are using the same, the same functionality that was there before Thanos was installed um, without doing, doing anything, any changes or whatever, but actually going to Thanos. So it's mostly, mostly the same. The, the, one, the one thing you, you gain by doing that is, um, is of, of course, long-term storage, because before the, the retention on the Prometheus was like 30 days, maybe, uh, and now it's like years. Um, but yeah, you don't have every fu functionality doing it that way. Uh, but the nice thing is you can then um, change over stuff gradually um, as you go. So you don't have to update every, every dashboard or every um, link or whatever at once. Um, so yeah, that's pretty, pretty nice thing to have. Um, and then um, basically all the other stuff. So like the compactor is just um, just a normal stateful set. Um, yeah, we added some some uh, some sharding and and. and uh, stuff like that, but that's that's all pretty basic stuff. Um, yeah. So the the, the sharding we we, um, we did was like uh, on um, so on the on the storage gateways of a storage gateway that does that handles the the historical data. So because um, the, the the thing with the storage gateways is. Uh, they have to load in all the blocks that uh, that, is, that are needed for a certain um, for a certain query. Um, so, depending on how how, um, how it's set up, it can can need a lot of uh, memory and a lot of storage. And, and uh, uh, so so we decided to have a, a separate uh, storage gateway for recent data and a separate one for historical data. Um, so. Uh, if one goes out of memory or whatever because of a, a particularly heavy query, then at least the the uh, for example, if someone makes a query for like give me all data for like uh, the last two two years across uh, x amount of time series or whatever, that can can get quite heavy. Um, but if someone does something like that, then the the storage gateway for historical data might go out of memory. Uh, but at least the the, the, the recent one, uh, which is like uh, set up for uh, any anything less than a month, I think, um, at least that gets um, gets to stay burning. Um, and then other than that, we also added like a Redis cache and stuff like that to speed it up, um, which works pretty well. But it's um, yeah, there's just a, a documented Thanos uh, way to do it. Um, yeah, like I said, and just uh, just use the the Helm provider for that because uh, yeah, I uh, I wanted to do most of it in, in Terraform because because of the complexity of the actual interconnection and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna deploy Redis <laughs> on my own. Like I'm gonna trust the the, the charts for that. Um, just checking if there's anything in. Important, I missed. Uh, oh yeah, so the storage config uh, is also pretty easy. Just a, a GCS bucket um, where we create uh, on the in the same region that the the, the central cluster is running. So um, all the all the the um, sidecars from all the clusters just write to the same bucket. Um, 
and then um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, all right, uh, and then yeah, we just uh, again um, put that in one password. Um, again, like I said earlier, uh, we used one password because that was what our company was using. Um, but there's multiple options there. Like uh, you could also do this through remote state. Uh, but again, you have to trust the encryption of your state. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much it for like the the, the non-trivial stuff in, the, in this module. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone has like questions or specific things uh, they want me to go through. Because uh, yeah, I, I could go, to go through all the code, but it's <laughs> pretty boring, I, I guess. Um, yeah, so I guess if there's no questions, then uh, that will be it. <laughs>